At the request of two of my longtime friends, I'm going to attempt to put a tutorial together on how I use the Rocky Mountain Packable system to call in bull elk. I've had great success with this call, and I want to start out by saying I don't consider myself a good elk caller, meaning that I don't always replicate what I think are clear, crisp, crisp <laughs> sharp sounds. But what I do consider myself is an efficient and an effective elk caller, meaning that I know what sounds to make and when to make them when I am engaged with a bull or multiple bulls. And one of the most important things is knowing when not to call. Once you get an animal engaged and he's coming, the best thing to do is just be quiet and listen. So what I'm going to attempt to do today is break down the typical bull elk call into three pieces. The initial note, and I break that down into two parts and I'll describe. Then the main part of the sound, and then the ending guttural note, which is very distinct and sometimes hard to replicate. But it is a classic end to each call. I'll also include how to chuckle, and bulls do a lot of what we call glunking, but the best way to do that isn't so much with the call other than to take the mouth mouthpiece out and use the tube on your hand. But what we're going to do, I've included call, bulls that I've, been, I've called in with this call, and I will break it down showing how those bulls make their initial sounds and how I try to replicate it with this call. This call is a, is a, just a, it's a tube with a mouthpiece with built-in latex for those of us that don't have the efficiency or the the ability to use diaphragms anymore. All my mouth is so deformed, doesn't work so well. So the first note we're going to do is just the initial note on a bull elk call. And all you do is take the, the mouthpiece, bite down, and then just slowly add pressure. And that's all there is to it. Again, a lot of bulls will start with that note right there. But there are several bulls, and we'll show on the video of the bulls, that they'll start with a little bit of a guttural note before they hit that high note. So to do that, you use your diaphragm to generate air as you're slowly biting down on the mouth. It sounds something like this. Again, air from the diaphragm, slowly put pressure on the mouthpiece to get those, that guttural, high-pitched first notes. And that's all there is to the first part of the call. So the second part of the call is just carrying the, a couple extra notes uh, after the initial note. And so what we'll do is we'll start with the initial note, carry the sound before we end with that deep guttural call or that deep guttural note. So again, just putting, bite, biting down and applying air pressure to the tube and the diaphragm as, as, you're, as you're building up air, it'll sound something like this from the initial note through the main part of the call. And you can hear we hit that real high peak note, and that's the, that's the note that will carry for long distances. The more pressure you put on the call, the louder and the further that sound will carry. Uh, and that's the key. You'll, you'll, that's the one that really strikes a nerve, in my opinion, uh, with the bulls. And especially when you're doing locator calls, you want to make sure you achieve that note. So again, this is all, all it is, applying pressure as we did to start the first note. And reaching the apex of that, the highest note in the call. Now what we're going to do is put the first notes, that peak note in the middle of the call, and ending it with a guttural call. And the guttural call is just like we do with that initial note where some bulls use that guttural start 
they all have a guttural finish and it's very distinct as you'll see with the examples I show on the bowls of how the calls end. But all you're doing on the guttural call is just ending like you're starting the first note. So when you're engaged with your tube, all it is is just ending with a mm through the tube. And it sounds something like this. So it's just, again from the diaphragm, blowing into the tube and letting your mouth relax as you're getting that note to come through to get that guttural sound. Again, one more time for the guttural sound. And again, I don't do it very well, but uh, you'll see on the video the importance of ending with that guttural note. Now we're going to include the chuckle and the chuckle is not always carried out by bulls. Uh, sometimes they'll go through the sequence that we've just practiced and showed you and they'll end with a chuckle. Sometimes the bulls will just chuckle without even doing the, the start of the what we call the typical bugle. So with a chuckle it's the same thing. You're, you're going to apply pressure to the mouthpiece and as you're applying pressure you relax with the guttural call and, and, and immediately apply more pressure and a guttural relaxation. And the number of chuckles isn't important. Um, I've heard bulls chuckle just a couple times, one time. I've heard them go four or five times. Um, and it, it's just another sh sign of dominance that bulls use as part of their calling re repertoire. So the chuckle is something like this. <coughs> And again, once you hit that first peak note or as you're coming out of that bugle, it's just applying quick pressure and quick bites uh, to the tube and the mouthpiece. So again, the chuckle. So anyway, those are the calls. When you put them all together from the initial call through the apex call to the end of the chuckle, this is what it sounds like. And that's really all there is to it. And again, with the examples I show, I will show you a bull that is goes through the bull, bugling sequence and then ends with three or four chuckles. Another sound that the bulls commonly make that's hard to mimic is glunking. And it's, a, it's another form that bulls use to show their dominance in a herd. But one way to imitate that is just by taking the mouthpiece off and then just wrapping on the end of it. Anyway, that's glunking, but I have some examples of that also on the video. Obviously, that's not a very good glunk. It's not even a glunk. It's a clunk. So that's about as good as I can do on showing you how to use this call. I think it's a very effective call, again, for people uh, like me that aren't very effective at applying the diaphragms in the mouth anymore. The older I get, the more deformed my mouth becomes and a little harder to keep them in and get the sounds crisp. But this is one call I can count on all the time. 
there these these Rocky Mountain packable systems come with replaceable mouthpieces and latex pieces it's it's for the money uh, this is the best toy I have found and I enjoy going out in the woods with this in every fall and it never fails me so anyway I hope you enjoyed that and that's all I have